Main man, made man here. You gotta know how I get down. We talking boxing. So, you know, I'm pretty sure everyone has already heard about the passing of the great Muhammad Ali. May he rest in peace. Condolences out to his family, his children. We lost a great man, a great icon, ladies and gentlemen. A man who represented the sport of boxing and took it to new heights. A trendsetter, if you will. An icon, a hero inside and outside of the ring. A man who basically needs no introduction. A worldwide household name. A man who came from Louisville, Kentucky. Poor beginnings, humble beginnings. And to become a worldwide icon. A worldwide icon, ladies and gentlemen. All from the sweat of his own brow. This kid fought his way to greatness. This guy fought his way to greatness, ladies and gentlemen. You know, let it not be misunderstood. Muhammad Ali is hands down my favorite fighter of all time. He was a true, true fighter through and through, ladies and gentlemen. He fought on so many different fronts. Such an inspiration to so many. So many fighters of today, so many fighters of yesterday, even fighters of his time were amazed by the skills of Muhammad Ali, how he was able to sell himself. There was no social media back then, ladies and gentlemen. Muhammad Ali's only selling point was himself. He didn't he didn't even rely on a promotional company to 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 promote him like that. He promoted himself. They could not shut him up. If you wanted to shut up Muhammad Ali, you had to beat him. That was the only way. And to beat him you had to go to the end of the earth, man. You had to go to damn near killing this man to beat him. That's how much of a fighter he was, man. This dude went and, like I said, fought on so many fronts. When he was called, when he got put out of boxing in the middle of his prime, man. This dude was in his prime. And they took him out of the sport because he opposed the Vietnam War. He did not want to go and fight in Vietnam. He felt as though he was more oppressed by the people here than people over in Vietnam. And he stood for something. He stood for something he believed in. This country wouldn't stand up for him and his religious beliefs. So why would he go and fight for this country is how he felt. And he stood and he gave up everything. This man was the heavyweight champion of the world. And he gave up everything to stand for something he believed in. He fought his way back. It may have took him so many years to get back. He probably was even out of his prime when he came back. But he fought it. He stood for something. And he won. Another thing that he fought. Ali was not revered in his day, ladies and gentlemen, as he is today. He was actually pretty much like Floyd Mayweather. He was kind of hated on. And so a lot of people wanted to see Ali lose. Ali would sell himself so well that he sold himself almost as a villain. Now, he sold himself as a man for black people. But white folks, and I ain't trying to be racist by far, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not a racist dude. I'm just telling it like it is. They are the ones who wanted to see him lose. And so he would taunt them. He would taunt them in so many ways. And they wanted to see him lose. And he knew this. So, you know, that's the thing. Over time, you saw the momentum shift. These same white folks who hated Ali when he fought Sonny Liston now love Ali when he's fighting George Foreman. You get me? Once he beat George Foreman over in Zaire. Ali was a great man. Friends of the great Malcolm X. A man who, here we are in 2016, and we think he's still the greatest of all time. Because he fought on so many fronts. Once again, in the ring, out the ring, he did the Vietnam thing. He won the hearts and minds of the people. Another fight that he won through his opposing of the Vietnam War and thing, many different things. His, the Olympics, he had, you know, though he's a former Olympic gold medalist, he didn't respect his medals. He was even stripped of his medals at one point. And to see in the 1980s, when they allowed Ali to pass the torch on and carry the Olympic torch, that was so significant in so many ways. A lot of people at the time may have saw it as he's passing the torch to the next generation, which can actually be viewed that way as well. But I viewed it as another fight in which he had won because though he had went through having his medals removed from him and all because of his not, you know, standing up for the country's 
the Olympics wanted to see him do, they still had to eventually recognize who this man was, the impact he had on the world, the impact he had on sports, the impact that he had on just society in general, and they had to let him pass that torch. That was beautiful. At the time, Evander Holyfield was the Olympic gold medalist, and they passed that torch on to Muhammad Ali. That was just, man, man, that was deep. Great man. His children should be extremely proud of him for all of the things that he's accomplished in life. You know, I just wonder sometimes, what if Muhammad Ali had social media, man? What if he had Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and all that stuff and can sell fights that way? How many records would he have broken the way he sold himself? How he ran from no one, the biggest and baddest men on the planet he stood there toe to toe with. And in many occasions, while he was out of his prime, people don't understand, man. Ali fighting Foreman was equivalent to Bernard Hopkins fighting Sergey Kovalev, in my opinion. That's the same equivalency. That's almost an impossible feat for many would think. Well, that's the odds that Muhammad Ali was up against, man. That's the odds he was up against. His other arch nemesis, Joe Frazier, man, you know, though him and Ali had many, many differences on many different fronts, the one thing mutual respect that they have for one another, that they they can, birds of a feather flock together, man, they knew that they were both fighters. They were cut from the same cloth that you will have to kill these men to beat these men. And they knew it. This is the reason why Joe Frazier assisted Muhammad Ali, because at the end of the day, Joe Frazier, it was a world champion. But he didn't feel as though he was the true world champion because he had taken out a true fighter in Muhammad Ali. And so he helped Muhammad Ali get his license back. He helped put a couple dollars in Muhammad Ali's pocket when he wasn't doing so well financially because he knew who Muhammad Ali, deep down inside, who he really was. And he was the same kind of person that he was, that Joe Frazier was. And that is he was a fighter. And all he knows is fighting. And all he wants to do is fight. And Joe Frazier knows that. There is no worse hell for a boxer than to not be able to fight. And Muhammad Ali was not able to fight for four years and still came back and won the championship. Only heavyweight to win the lineal championship three times, ladies and gentlemen. This is awesome. This is awesome. This man will be greatly missed. Every fighter of today needs to study the career of Muhammad Ali because before you jump out the window and want to talk about how much damage he took, and why he became who he, you know, how he became. Before you jump out that window, you know, remember who he did it for. Remember he didn't do that. He did that for you. He did that for you to progress the sport, to progress us as a people. He did a lot of the things he did for you, man. After boxing was over for Muhammad Ali, he still, through, through his illness, fought with Parkinson's, another fight that he was fighting. And he fought it for many years. But... Even then, he still hung around the sport. He still hung around the sport. He loved boxing. He was boxing. You know, this man was a great thing, a great fighter, man. He, he, he just, there was no weight limits in Ali's day. He was going 15 rounds. The gloves were different. You know, it's easy for us to sit back and criticize his rope-a-dope strategy. But that man had to do what he had to do to win. And he was not going to let any adversity in front of him stop him from gaining such. And in my eyes, he will always be the greatest of all time. Always. There's nothing more respectable than a man standing up for what he believes in. This dude stood up against the dark forces of boxing, the government, a illness, the naysayers. He fought on all of these fronts, man. And he never gave up unbelievable story we will be telling this story to our grandchildren Ali will forever be remembered and we have lost another one of the greats ladies and gentlemen so these are some of the reasons I consider Ali the greatest of all time may he rest in peace condolences once again to his family and I'm just going to sit back and watch a bunch of Ali documentaries and stuff that they have on TV today I'm just going to sit back and take it all in. Hopefully, I'll learn a lot of things that I never knew about Muhammad Ali. But until the next video, main man, main man, don't forget to subscribe, Twitter, 
Made Man 511, Facebook, Main Man, Made Man, Boxing Forum, Google Plus, Main Man, Made Man. Um, yeah, man, just, you know, I hope no fighters of the future water down the name of Muhammad Ali. I hope fight fans in the future um, don't water down the name of Muhammad Ali. Let's not forget the contribution that he gave to us, the great fights, the impossible feats that he did, winning so late in his life, in his career, uh, uh, becoming another heavyweight champion in, what, 1978, man? I mean, they, these these, these, these were insurmountable odds, man, insurmountable odds. He fought in a whole nother era and won. These are big deals, man. These are real, very, very big deals. Rest in peace to the greatest of all time.